Hello there, welcome to Cupid, my name is Polish Lynx and let's continue with this rather confusing story. Okay, she turned... Rosa. Rosa turned the book upright and read the words out loud. Once a... I, um, that is the U with the short sound. It is pronounced like this. Jean made the sound, his face still in his lady's there. Rosa nodded and continued. Her nerves were frozen, but she was actually at ease in his presence. She felt like a child being told by their parent. The parent was strict, but still caring. Caring, sorry. And the child was jumpy, but eager to learn and please. Most of all, he would not hurt her for her mistakes. Rosa was almost sure. Their lib pet? Lift. The past tense of live. Why do we change it? It is a rule of grammar that... Grammar? Jeanem narrowed his eyes at her. Do you even know your alphabet? Rosa shook her head. You should start there. Jeanem rose from his chair and disappeared amongst the shelves. He left behind an old thick book covered in green felt. This was what he had been writing in earlier. It looked tattered and worn. The pages laid fat on its side so that the book didn't close properly. Rosa reached out to pick at the cover when... You are not to touch that! Rosa's whole body froze at the sound of Julien's warning. Julien's stare followed her even as she whispered numerous apologies under her breath. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! Julien just rolled his eyes. You are always seeking forgiveness for everything. Am I? I'm sir. His hand struck the table in front of Rosa. In the quiet library, the sound rang uncomfortably in the ear. When she looked up, Julien's face was looming severely above hers. He moved closer to her, his eyes fixed on her intensely. Rosa's mouth hung open. She struggled to say something, but her wits were like the burning ends of a matchstick. Before she could compose herself, she felt Julien's hand lift her chin. Rosa's heart thumped loudly inside her chest. Don't do it, man. Please don't, not you, too. She felt his breath on her face, and her heart sank in despair. Mother's voice resounded in her head. In the end, they are all the same. He is like everyone else. She shut her eye and prepared herself for the worst, like she always did when... Then she felt her face being turned from side to side. She opened her eye to see Julien studying her face like a textbook. You're a fairly attractive girl. Why do you carry yourself as if it is a slide? He lifted the hair that hid her damaged eye. Rosa clenched her teeth. Is it because you were hurt before? He said it so matter-of-factly, like he was start stating that sky was blue. Rosa recalled from his touch. No, I did that to myself. I wasn't talking about your eye. He placed a book on the table. It was a thin fuffled field with letters. There were lines on the book that instructed the user to trace letters with their quill. Rosa wanted to focus on it, but she could feel the truth in the Marquis's words stinging her. It was the way you went limp when I touched you. Next time, I advise you to fight back. If you don't want to be touched, then you don't have to be. Do you understand this? I am weak, says who. His eyes were humorless. The world cares not for people who think of themselves as victims, Rosa. If you need power, then be powerful. To have it, it is necessary to crush things along the way. Rosa flinched under the wave of his stare. She realized that the polite and cautious Julien was but a face set. It was still him, but it was nothing but an old portrait an artwork of his devising. Synthetic, aloof and irrelevant, it couldn't capture his essence in a few human strokes. Suddenly, Rosa realized he was powerful. Who are you? She caught herself before saying it loud. You are not Julem. And yet, she spoke to her as if he knew what it was like to hurt and to fear. If you don't start acting like you own yourself, then people will not hesitate to take everything. 
he laid out the rest of the books he had brought out. One was an activity book for children. It had a picture of a child holding an apple with an arrow stuck in it. Another was a book of limericks. The other two were thicker books that intimidated her. She would come to know them as Hamlet and Paradise Lost. But the one that caught her eye was an ornately designed book. It had a beautiful red jacket with delicate gold trimmings lining the corners. The gods and goddesses of Roman mythology. This would be her favorite book, uh, fav her favorite book, her treasure, and she knew it like love at first sight. These books are yours. Take them with you. Read them thin ones first, and then gradually build your vocabulary with the thicker ones. Rosa ran her hands over the skin of the red book. She opened the cover gingerly, as if carefully unwrapping a present. Thank you. No thanks needed. I simply showed you some books from a portion of the library you were unaware of. You are still so generous. Even if you are like this. Like what? That. What? Um, somewhat irritable. Julien didn't reply, leaving an awkward silence lingering between them. Then he gave a giant laugh that made Rosa jump out of her skin. I do look the irritable, don't I? Why? Is it because of Emily? Shlem's eyes drifted away. No. I've always been. You just pointed it out. But you are not usually like this. Especially with Catherine. And it pounds people. I find it easy to adapt to people. Especially to the ones I like. Shlem looked at Rosa as if he had just become aware of her presence. Makes me wonder why am I so stern with you. I'm sorry. Rosa shook her head. I somehow prefer this side of you. Julien cooked his head to the side. He brought out the green book that Rosa noticed earlier. This is called a journal. When you learn to write, start one. What is it? Something you can use to remember yourself when you are... You have forgotten. Does it work? It used to... Nowadays, not anymore. Who? Oh. The act itself is the only thing I remember. Now, let's start with your wobbles. A scream pierced the holes of the chateau. It was Catherine. Shlem sprinted the door with Rosa not far behind. Wait, don't tell me the sister. Back in the piano, Catherine took a shaky step towards her sister. She wasn't moving at all. Blood dotted in the ivory keys. I didn't... It was an accident. Hey! Emily! She was overcome with the urge to approach her sister and shake her awake. Make sure she was okay, but... It was a nasty fall. Oh, Emily. But Catherine saw the way her sister's head snapped back as it collided with the sharp corner of the piano. Ow. She watched it all like a series of photographs in her head. She had to check on her, but her feet refused to move. Instead, she began to retreat into a corner. She didn't even notice her legs were moving until her forehead touched the wall. She didn't want to turn around. Her sister was on the floor. Yeah. She changed a bit. Okay, that's not the proper woman to say this. Uh, her eyes were still open, unblinking. It was an accident. It was nothing but an accident. Was it? She pushed first. She got really scary. She strangled me. What? That's absurd. Are you sure? Would she do that? I, I don't know. I think she did. Catherine touched her throat. It felt fine. That buried girl. Emily, is it? She really believes just because the Marquis took her in that he is interested in her. Well, she is obsessed with the master. 
the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Wasn't her mother a bit... You know... Not right in the head? It probably runs in the family. Emily had looked mad. Her eyes had burned with malice for her as she had closed her fingers around Catherine's neck. But she couldn't remember if that had really happened. Sister was always kind to her. She would never ever hurt her, even when they got into fights. Sister loved her. Am I turning mad? I have the blood of a mad woman. Am I going to end up like her? I... I only told her the truth. Julem doesn't care for her. And she doesn't even care for him that much either. It was all just tough. Their relationship. No sense trying to make everyone else miserable too. But she called me jealous and a cunt. She has never called me a cunt. She said they have decided to send me away. My lessons sent home. The piano replaced. It was for my own good, she said. I don't have to travel here all the time. I can concentrate on my endeavors. Uh, on my other endeavors, I can make new friends. But I know she just doesn't want me near the chateau or Jules. She hates it when I catch her with him. Perhaps this morning was the last straw. She hates it, but she also smirks at me when I see them. Like she basks in it. I think I might hate her. Catherine's thoughts run through her head like a storm. They part out of her aimlessly. I wonder if the piano is broken. Am I going to pay for it? What will become of us without sister's wages? What of father's medicine? What of my dreams? Sister can't be dead. Sister can't be dead. Catherine brought her fingers to her lips and rubbed on her thumb. She didn't notice this. Her mind was preoccupied. She was in her corner of the wall, biting her fingers. It was a tiny comfort in a rapidly collapsing world. Julem opened the door and found Emily lying on the floor. An ugly gauge broke the skin of her forehead. Facing the wall was Catherine, shivering like a leaf and viciously devouring one of her fingernails. He approached her cautiously. Catherine? Rosa was out of breath but was still able to let out a gasp at the scene. Emily's lifeless eyes stared up at nothing while Catherine pressed herself into the corner. What had happened after she had left? Rosa, will you call her help, please? See that someone checks on Emily. Rosa did as she was told, but what she wanted to do was hug Catherine herself. Julien took a small step towards her. He called out her name slowly, coaxingly. Catherine turned her head, her thumb still on her lower lip. The flesh was torn, and a smudge of a scarlet painted her teeth. He, it was, it, it was an accident. I, I, I swear. Of course, it was Catherine. Of course, it was. She pushed me first. She wanted me sent away. She wanted me gone. You can tell me about it later. Let me take you away from this room. Well, what have I done? Catherine fell to her knees and wept. Large sobs sucked the air out of her. She felt like drowning, trying to keep herself afloat in between sobs. Every exit was a squeezing pain in her lungs. She felt Julien's arms wrap around her. What have I done? What have I done? You didn't do anything, ma chérie. This is not your fault. There was a bitter belt building up in her throat, and she felt that no amount of crying could push it back down. What am I going to... Father is... Sister... I'm just so scared. Julien's arms would t wound tighter around her and she clutched on his warmth in this vast sea of fear. You don't have to be. I will always be by your side. Catherine. I will take care of you and your father, alright? You don't have to worry about your future. Her tears soaked in his shirt through, but the squeezing in her chest felt less painful. Why do you do this? Why do you care so much for me? Julien's brows throbbed, as if confused that she even asked. 
I just do. It was a boldly stated fact, as if painfully obvious, as if Catherine was a fool for not knowing it. It made Catherine's heart expand in her ribs. When she looked back, she would recall this as the moment she fell in love with him. Oh, crap. The look in his eyes was reassuring and strong. She wasn't alone, she was going to be alright. Let's get you away from here. He supported her arms and stood her up, careful to block the view of her sister from her eyes. He led her to the door. Catherine hated how fast her relief came. She was still drenched in sorrow at her sister's death. Her father would not take well to the news, especially in his health. But she was right, and she hated it. Rosa was with her. She didn't have to leave her piano. Her dreams. Him. Nothing had to change. And most importantly, ugh, most importantly, she hated the voice that came whispering in her head over and over again. Thank God she's dead. Thank Godness. Oh shit. Oh crap. Okay, let's end the episode here. Man. But wasn't Catherine dead already? Or just something is wrong with my mind? Maybe because I'm still sick? Well, whatever. Okay, let's end this here. And we'll continue with the game in the next episode. Hope you enjoyed and see you then. Bye.